I'll say right from the top that I'm going to be presenting some pretty horrid science to you. But I'll also point out some, well, less horrid science as well. In our look-see on berberin supplementation and the effect on metabolic disorders. All you really need to know about berberin is that it's a molecule that comes from uh, multiple plants and roots like barberry, uh, golden seal, gold thread. And if you think that I'm now naming James Bond films, I don't blame you because I too have no clue what these plants are considering that they sound like sequels to the famous 007 Goldfinger. The point that you need in your noggin is berberin is a molecule found in many plants. And the claim is that berberin is this super molecule that positively affects different clinical markers like blood fats, blood sugar, and more. Is there any truth to that though? Well, if we begin by looking at this analysis of 18 studies, the researchers included only randomized controlled trials that recruited people with a series of metabolic disorders like type 2 diabetes prediabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and even polycystic ovary syndrome. I also really like that they excluded studies that used doses that were too low, defined as not reaching a minimum threshold believed to be effective. But let's look at the data, starting with blood fats, known as triglycerides. Elevated triglycerides are linked to multiple disease states, chief of which is cardiovascular disease. Now, looking at this data, we see that the studies listed on the left side, and we see the usual bunch of numbers in the middle. Don't worry about that, because the numbers are graphically represented on the right side. That line above zero indicates a neutral effect. So no benefit of berberin supplementation, but also no worsening of triglycerides with berberin. If the tiny green squares and lines, which represent the individual study results, move to the right, that indicates a benefit of berberin supplementation. At this first glance, it does seem that there are many more leaning right than leaning left. And we can see and corroborate that by looking at the black diamond at the very bottom, which is a summary result with all the studies taken into account. Okay, so these data would indicate berberin has an effect on triglycerides. Now, normally I'd move on to the next outcome, something like blood sugar, but I'd like to stay here for a bit longer because these data are actually absolute trash. If you've been following Physionic for a time, you may be a bit confused because this looks about the same as many other meta-analyses that we've looked at, but there are some subtle damning differences in this one. For one, if we peek at the numbers, as daunting as they may be, and we focus in on the standard deviation columns here, the SD columns. The standard deviation is the spread of the data. So if you have three people and one person gets a result of four, another gets a result of three, and the final person gets a result of 4.5, the standard deviation informs us that there is a spread of the data. So in the data in front of us, the average result called the mean might be minus 0.02 and minus 0.45 with a standard deviation or spread around the mean of 0.49 and 1.21, according to the second study on our list. However, look at some of these other numbers. The first study has a standard deviation of 784 and 793, depending on the group that you're looking at, the control group or the berberin experimental group. But the wildest one is this Marcy Zillay study with a standard deviation of over 9,000. I'll refrain from adding a Dragon Ball Z reference. He yeah, never mind. No, I won't. Vegeta, what did you say his power level is? It's over 9,000. So with that extreme of standard deviations, either the researchers of that study recruited mice wearing human clothes and mistook them for being very quiet and very small humans, or they recruited aliens without knowing it, or the researchers of this meta-analysis royally screwed up. Well, I opened up a few of these studies and sure enough, the researchers of the meta-analysis really messed up. There's other clues that they messed up too, but I'll leave it there because I'm sure I've already gotten some get to the point comments. The point is, this is an egregious mistake that makes the whole analysis untrustworthy. 
and inaccurate. That doesn't even include some of the other issues that I found in this analysis. So let's put this study back on the screen and let's draw a big red X through it. This is a trash study. I'm honestly shocked that a pretty well-known journal like Frontiers of Pharmacology missed this. I've contacted them to let them know, so we'll see if they fix the issue. So then, will we ever find the answer to Berberin's role in metabolic disease? Well, fortunately and unfortunately, there are other meta-analyses on the topic, and we don't need to rely exclusively on them either. If we open up another analysis on the topic, the study did several things better than the last, although, it also wasn't flawless. What do I mean? Well, for one, the study was pre-registered with a database called Prospero, which means that the researchers declare their questions of interest ahead of time, which can reduce the bias of the analysis. They also included only larger studies of 60 participants or more, and each study had to be a minimum of four weeks long, in addition to still all being randomized controlled trials. That's honestly all really good news. In the analysis, 46 studies were included, and considering that the study released the same year that the other study did, it does raise the question of why didn't the other analysis include more than 18 studies? I mean, they were looking at similar outcomes, another reason that I think that the first study was badly put together. Let's look at the data. To be clear, we're looking at HbA1c, otherwise known as glycated hemoglobin. Essentially, it's a sugar molecule, glucose, attached to hemoglobin proteins in your red blood cells. If this glycation or the attachment of glucose is high, it associates with diabetes and worse health, generally. I know that we started with triglycerides, blood fats, before, but there's a funny reason why I'm not covering it first. I'll cover it in a minute, don't worry. Okay, so... We're looking at studies that used berberin as the experimental condition and placebo, an inert non-berberin substance as the control. This is nice because it's a more rigorous comparison. The same exact rules apply to reading this as before, but be aware that the pro-berberin effect is to the left instead of to the right. So the black diamond and the statistics confirm bourbon reduces HbA1c, so that's awesome. In fact, to corroborate that data, we can also look at measures of insulin resistance, known as HOMA-IR. Before we get to that, and triglycerides, and some details that you should know, we'll also cover the comparisons of berberin against conventional medicine like metformin, and in combination with conventional medicine, as well as the dosing strategies and the effect over time in the extended version of this video, which is part of the Physionic Insiders if you care to join. The link is in the description box. And guess what? That also comes with podcasts, exclusive articles and videos and much more, like I said, in the description box. But let's discuss HOMA IR for now. HOMA IR is an index taking into consideration blood sugar and blood insulin levels to determine one's insulin resistance. The more insulin resistant you are, the more at risk of multiple diseases. So we want that sucker to go down. Here's that data. Remember, berberin is the experimental condition, so if the diamond swings to that direction, it means berberin is effective compared to, in this case, controls, not just including placebo groups, but also lifestyle interventions and other control conditions. So HOMA IR improves with berberin consumption. Okay, cool. Looking good for berberin. Now, let's address the triglycerides, those pesky blood fats that we were discussing way back when. Here's that data. Do you, do you notice anything off about it? You probably noticed it because we've been using it all along, but there's no main effects diamond at the bottom. That's right. The researchers literally forgot to add it or something went wrong in the editing of the paper because it should definitely be there. In fact, we can see the values here. So tell you what, why don't we color it in for them? Okay, hopefully I don't screw this up. Right about here, minus 0 0.48. So we'll create that diamond right about here. There you go, buddy. Okay, in editing, we'll add a diamond too because uh, there's another issue with this that we should discuss. If we look at the top here, that says a uh, mean difference 
which means that the researchers are simply looking at the difference between the experimental results and the control group results. But that also means that we use units like milligrams per deciliter or millimoles per liter, since the drop is estimated at 0.48 as we beautifully colored in, of course, I doubt that the effect is actually 0.48 milligrams per deciliter because, well, that's basically nothing. On the other hand, we could assume that it's millimoles per liter, but the reality is the researchers never tell us anywhere. So we're here assuming when they could also be showing us in another form of measurement called a standardized mean difference which would also fit that 0.48 effect well too. So if we don't make any assumptions, the best that we can say is that berberin improved triglycerides, but we don't actually know by how much. Okay, you can now see why I started this video pretty pessimistically, but we did end up scraping some conclusions out of this. What were they, you might ask? Well, considering that I discussed a lot of statistics. Well, while the meta-analyses covering the topic leave a tremendous amount to be desired, we can also see that many of the individual studies skew in favor of berberin. So it seems likely that berberin does improve clinical metrics like blood sugar, insulin, triglycerides, even if we aren't sure by how much. So your takeaway here is that berberin probably works if you have type 2 diabetes or are close. I know that this was a lot, but if your head isn't too scrambled, I have more of my work on this topic right here, and I'll confuse you over there. Thanks for watching.